The last topic that we want to cover in this section is continuous compound interest. This is something you've no doubt seen in some other courses, but we're going to take a look at how calculus actually leads us to some of these results or a formula that you've pr probably used before. So we can start off with the formula for simple interest, which is our total amount is equal to the principal that we invest plus the principal, or again, that original amount that we invest, times some rate over a period of time. Or factoring out that value for P, this becomes P times 1 plus RT. If we have a situation where interest is being compounded n times a year, so yearly, monthly, daily, by the minute, our formula becomes a equals P times 1 plus R over N to the N over T or to the NT power. So again, formulas you've probably seen in some previous courses. What we want to start considering now is interest being compounded continuously. So in order to consider interest being compounded continuously, we can take the limit of our formula for compound interest as n approaches infinity. So as our number of compounding periods approaches infinity. So this is going to lead us to a result that we've seen before, but now using this knowledge that we have for limits, we can use those to actually derive this formula for continuously compounded interest. So what we're saying is we want to take the limit as n approaches infinity of p plus p times 1 plus r over n raised to the nt power. Our value p is a constant, so we can pull that out in front of this limit notation. And then what we're going to do is multiply this original exponent by r over r. So multiplying by r, r over r is the same thing as multiplying by 1, so we're not actually changing our expression at all. So now we have p times the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 plus r over n, and now just rewriting this, rearranging some of our multiplication, we can rewrite this as n over r times rt. So making a substitution, we're going to let s equal r over n. And in this case, we're taking the limit as n approaches infinity. So that means s is approaching r over some increasingly larger and larger number. So we're getting r divided by 10, divided by 10 million, divided by 10 billion. So what that tells us is that s is approaching 0. So we can update our problem to be p times the limit as s approaches 0 of the quantity 1 plus s to the 1 over s, all of that raised to the rt power. So what we end up with in this last step is this interior part of this expression being the precise definition for the value e. So e is a constant that you've most likely seen in other courses. It's approximately 2.78, etc., etc. But this limit expression is the precise definition for that value. So this leads us to, again, this formula that you've most likely seen before, that PERT equation, or the formula for continuously compounded interest. So if our interest is being compounded continuously, then our total amount of that investment can be calculated as the principal that we invested times e to the rt, so times the rate times the time. So we have a couple of examples that we'll first look at setting up how we'll evaluate that and then turn things over to Wolfram Alpha to actually complete these calculations for us. So in example six, uh, a bank that offered a five-year CD earns 9.36% compounded continuously. If 20000 is invested, how much will we have in five years? So to answer this question, 
we need to solve the formula A equals 20,000 times E to the point 0936 times 5. So in this case, solving is simply evaluating the right-hand side of this formula. And we'll come back to Wolfram Alpha in a minute to do that. So another question we could ask under these same circumstances is, how long will it take that account to be worth $30,000? So in this case, we would need to solve, and it will actually take some solving. We would need to solve 30,000, since that's the final amount that we want, equals 20,000 times E to the point 0936 times some amount of time, T. So we'll come back to Wolfram Alpha to look at how we would solve that type of problem and look at setting up questions 7 and 8. So in 7, how many years are required for an investment to double if it's appreciating at a rate of 4% compounded continuously? So in this case, we know that we have some initial amount that we would invest times e to the interest rate, 0.04, times some amount of time. And what we're told is we want that original investment to double. So we would need to solve for, with our final amount being 2 times p, because that's twice that original investment. And what we would see here is that those p's would cancel. So what we're solving is 2 equals e to the 0.04t. So that'll be very similar to what we have in example 8 then, except in this case, we want our investment to triple in two years, and the unknown is what rate should we have, to, what rate should, would we need to invest that at? So to triple, we want our final amount to be 3p, so three times that principal investment, times e equals our principal investment times e to some interest rate times two years. So we have the setup for each of these problems. Let's go back and then with Wolfram Alpha, we'll come up with our final answers for each of these. So in example six, part A, we have this expression that we need to evaluate. So to do that, we can just type in 20,000 E to the, and then in parentheses, in parentheses 0 0.0936 times five. So again, always a good idea to check this input to make sure that matches what you were expecting to be typing in, what, what you expected it to evaluate. And we get a result of 31,935.95. I clicked on that by mistake. So we get some other output here, things that we're not necessarily interested in. But we get this final result of 31000 dollars 935 In part B, we're asked how long will it take for the account to be worth $30,000. So in this case, we have a problem that we need to solve. So we'll ask Wolfram Alpha to solve 30000 equals 20000 e to the 0 0.0936 times t. So what we get here, if we look at the input interpretation, this looks like exactly what we want to solve. But our result here has this sort of, for us, unexpected additional content in here. The reason is, to get the precise solution that we want, we want to add a domain restriction to this. So this is answering this for any possible value of t. It has this letter i here in the solution, which means it's including imaginary numbers, things like that. If you've never covered those in a course before, nothing we need to worry about. What we want to do is come back to this and add a domain restriction where that amount of time t has to be greater than 0. So our real solution that we come up with 
a little ways down here. So this is just giving us some different interpretations of what it is that we're solving. But our real solution is what we're interested in, in this case 4.33. So this would mean that our time t is going to be 4.33 years. So in example 7 and 8, we'll do something similar. Um, for example 7, we can either start with the, the original expression or we can start with that simplified expression where we canceled the p's. So we're going to solve this equation with, again, this domain restriction that t needs to be greater than 0, since we're not going to consider negative time. And in this case, we get a result of 17.33, if we were to round that to two decimal places. So the amount of time in this case would be 17.33 years, depending on how we're asked to round that result. And then similarly for our last example, we could change this to 3 equals e to the 0 0.04, or actually let's see, we're going to change that to e to the r times 2, and we'll change the domain to say that r has to be greater than 0, since that interest rate has to be something positive. to get an interest rate of 0.5493 or 54.9%.